Hello and welcome to Badminton Unlimited, your weekly show of all things badminton. Coming up, we're in Paris with Bulgaria's badminton trailblazers, the Stoiva sisters, as they spill the beans on each other. I cannot, I cannot wake up so early. <laughs> She's not, she's not used to wake up early. No, this is my first training on this time and I feel so awful. <laughs> I'm just thinking only for the bed. <laughs> this is when I will go back. <laughs> and in our new game segment, we find innovative ways to use kitchen utensils on a badminton court. We begin this week's show in North America, where the HSBC BWF World Tour continued with the 2018 Yonex US Open. Held at the Fullerton Titan Gym in California, the World Tour Super 300 event presented a perfect opportunity for American fans to see up close some top-class badminton action. Finals day began with the men's singles contest as Korea's Lee dong Hyun took on Dutchman Mark Hal Hao. A first meeting between the players meant a cautious start, but eventually it was Cal Howe who gained a foothold after clinching the first game. World number 38 Lee, however, managed to level the match at one all, despite a late charge by his European opponent. The deciding game proved to be an entertaining one, both players keeping pace with each other before Lee pulled away with a final score of 14-21-21-16. 21 21-16. 그냥 첫 세트 졌는데 당황하지 않고 끝까지 이제 어 준비 잘 해서 하나 한점한점 한점 이렇게 경기했던 게 승리를 할수 있었던 것 같아요. The women's singles final between home favorite Pei Wenjan and former world number one Li Jere didn't disappoint fans either. Zhang, looking to bag her second world tour title, got the start she wanted when she prevailed 26-24 in the opening game. Lee responded by taking the second, reminding everyone that she was far from being a spent force. The 2012 Olympic champion showed her class when she powered to a convincing victory in the decider. 24-26, 21-15, 21-11. Up next was the women's doubles final between China's Tang Jinhua and Yu Zhao Han and Korea's Kim Hye Jong and Kim So Young. The Koreans would strike first, taking the first game 21-18 after a feisty tussle. However, Tang and Yu were a different proposition for the rest of the match. Ranked 71, the Chinese duo were constantly on the offensive and Kim and Kim struggled to get their defensive act together. Tang and Yu emerged winners after three games, 18-21, 21-13, 21-15. Mixed doubles was up next, and it was a match-up between Olympic silver medalist Chang Peng Soon and Go Lu Ying, and Germany's Marvin Emil Seidel and Linda Effler. The Germans were fearless against the Malaysians, and if not for some brilliant play from Go, the first game could have easily swung in Seidel and Effler's favour. Then he brought the house down. Well, he knows she's brilliant at net. Her partner Chan also kept the Germans at bay in the following game as he helped to ensure a second World Tour triumph with a 21-19-21-15 result. It's out and that's the championship. I think today we're doing pretty well. Especially when they were coming up in the second round, we just got a lot of points. Even though it's 300, but this is our second round. I hope that I just got hurt and I hope it's a big deal for me. So I hope we can continue on. It was a battle of lesser known players when Oh Zhe Ni and Run Xiang Yu faced Kim Won Ho and Kang Min Hyuk in the men's doubles. It was to be a tough start for the Chinese tandem as they found it hard to deal with a lively display from their Korean opponents. 
there. Great pressure. Kim and Kang surged forward to take the first game, but their advance would stop there. That'll work for the Koreans. Oh, and Run were quick to shrug off their flat performance in the opener when they restored parity in the second game. They were in the ascendant from that point on, the third and deciding game showcasing their newfound confidence. After almost an hour of play, Oh and Run celebrated their first title for the year. That's it. The score read 16216, 我们上个月刚打了一次我们也输给他们了Paris it's uh, really nice uh, because the, the Eiffel Tower was our favorite place we watch it only on Google photos or on the TV in some movies and this was our dream to come in Paris and to visit the Eiffel Tower so we this was uh, unexpected that we will move to Paris and living and practicing here so we are really happy that uh, now we are here to some change, not only in Bulgaria, to see how it's in the other countries. Now, Gabriela and Stephanie Stoiva are far from your regular tourists in the French capital. The women's doubles pair from Bulgaria have called it home for the past year, after a big decision to move to Western Europe in a bid to raise their level. Recently, our cameras were given exclusive access to follow the sisters around their daily routine and find out how the world number nine duo usually spend their days when they're not on the tournament trail. Such an earlier year, we were moving from our hometown. We were 15 and 16. It was actually a tough decision for us because uh, we left home, our parents, so it was only me and she. But I think this was the good thing that uh, I was not alone or she. We were together, so we were supporting each other. Our parents were supporting us in this. Also for them, it was a tough decision to send us in the big city in Bulgaria, Sofia. Not many will make uh, this decision to move from their home to a different city and to be uh, without their parents. So I think uh, moving to Germany also was helping us. We could practice with the foreigners players there. But I think the more uh, which helped us uh, when we came here in, pra in France, I'm not like sport type, so I'm not good for the sport things like uh, some, some things on the fitness, like uh, taking some heavy weights or uh, running on the stadium. But on another point, she is very good on this one uh, to keep the motivation like for the running and this. So I think this is helping me. She helping me, especially to me when we are on the stadium or we have some physical things. She pushed me that um, I need to do not better than her, but just to be like same level, to just to be compared on the, these things. So I think this is helping us a lot. I cannot, I cannot wake up so early. 
She's not, she's not used to wake up early. No, this is my first training on this time and I feel so awful. <laughs> I'm just thinking only for the bed. <laughs> this is when I will go back. <laughs> First of all, so they will have a good warm first, and after just uh, keep going to keep the shape on. So because they are all, they are already ready for the competition, so they just just to keep going, just to do some some speed work, some explosive work on court, and they will be short. Our coach, uh, his name is Mikhail Popov. He's Bulgarian. Uh, before he was playing double, <laughs> uh, now he's living in France. Um, he was, uh, we started working with him in 2016. We can uh, see that uh, the work with him is giving big results for us, which is even surprising. He put us on the fitness. We never been in the fitness <laughs> before. He make us to work hard. Uh, he didn't give us any rest, even if we're lazy. <laughs> surprising, she's doing well, yeah. Even our coach can say that. <laughs> He's also I surprised. Me? <laughs> Finish. Smile, Stephanie. <laughs> we enjoy the yeah. work with him to practice. Uh, it's totally different than with our previous coach. He actually didn't decide that he will be our coach. Uh, because we were uh, playing for his club. It's called Isili Molino Badminton Club. It's the biggest club in France. So. And uh, we did uh, quite good results. It was a good opportunity uh, for my club. And it's a good challenge for me. I will, I will decide to, to try to help them. So that's why I proposed to them to, to stay in France, to practice, to improve their level. The goal is still the same, you know, in every practice, the main goal is uh, to improve and to beat, to beat the Asian. So we always keep, keep objectives uh, this, on that side. So uh, it was an extra practice, but we still keep going in the hard work. So we always, always continue 100%. spend two times per day. Um, it depends which day of the week. Um, we have uh, two hours in the gym and two hours of the court. So yeah, practically like Monday and Wednesday we have a gym, so we have two hours in the gym. And the rest of the days of the week we have uh, two hours morning and afternoon in the badminton court. They change their game a lot in the last three years, especially in the last, especially the last six months. Uh, so they are better technically, physically. And now I think that they should improve more, really to, to be for a long time in the top 10 in the world. So just to, be, to believe more that they can beat every time the best players in the world. This is me, no practice tomorrow. No early practice at all. It's important. So 8.30 in the whole program. Yeah, 8.30. To start at 9. Yeah. 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 Welcome back. Badminton players produce magic with a racket in hand. But what happens when we swap their rackets for some kitchen utensils? Let's find out in this battle of the kitchen utensils. Two, 
One. Two. Four. We are back in the city of love. Earlier in the show, Gabriella and Stephanie Stoiva gave us a peek into their training life in their adopted city. In part two of our time with Bulgaria's dynamic duo, the sisters show us why they couldn't have picked a better place as their second home. I actually didn't expect to move in Paris to yeah. live. This was unexpected <laughs> plans. It, it happened really fast that we moved to Paris and practice and change our coach also and it's uh, really good this is typical for uh, France to see people in the cafeteria sitting uh, drinking coffee especially Fridays yeah. on the weekends which they're not uh, busy with the job with the, you can see the kids going and uh, going out and playing around so it's it was a little bit strange yeah. Yeah. completely strange for us to see like even in Bulgaria, they have like people going out and sit, but not like this um, in the neighborhood. This is good for us. We, we can see different uh, culture and different uh, different style of living in for another country, which is nice for us. We, can, we will have a big experience in our life. <laughs> the city of Paris is amazing. The worst thing is that uh, when it starts snowing, then we can. Uh, cannot have like a lot of snow like in Bulgaria, but it's pretty amazing to visit uh, the center, the Eiffel Tower, the museum. It's really amazing and to be here we are very happy. <laughs> Behind us is the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> um, for us it's very special because we, for the first time we see her when we come here. We watch her only on the movies or the pictures and we didn't expect that we can come. So one day we will yeah. come and live in the city yeah. <laughs> of love. <laughs> <laughs> of love. We, we're very excited that uh, we get chance even to go on the top. So yeah. we hope uh, we can go again. <laughs> I don't like messy things. <laughs> I'm, I'm directly going after her all the time because she's very big mess. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Maybe because for this uh, we are a very good combination. You need to have balance one. Um, she's more like uh, this kind of type, like more like a uh, boy type, you know? Don't like to go to make her nails. My sister is after me cleaning. Uh, when we are going for some tournament, I'm not packing the bags because uh, if I go, then we start fighting. Uh, I'm putting some clothes here. She doesn't like the place where I'm putting it. This is not like uh, making uh, the clothes are not good uh, looking here. Don't put it. So better I stay like <laughs> in separate room, different room. <laughs> and I'm leaving all bags to her. She's packing everything. Instagram, um, it's not so much important for me than the people which are following us, uh, following our um, trainings, uh, tournaments, um, everything what is happening in our life. So like this, we can make uh, our spot more popular. And I think like this, uh, the people which are not around us, they can uh, follow us, especially in Bulgaria, and just follow our results. The Facebook page Stoiva Sisters is uh, since 2013 
and it's uh, running really well. We get like 10,300 uh, uh, likes on our page and this is really surprising to see so many people supporting us, uh, following our results. It's uh, pretty good that uh, me and my sister, we can post uh, uh, what we are doing and to show to people that uh, also have uh, other sports than football, gymnastic and wrestling. And we are trying to somehow with our achievements to make it uh, popular. And after the first European Games in Baku, we kind of make it uh, famous. And now when the people, uh, when somebody say badminton, they connect it with us. So it's pretty amazing that we are making our sport famous. texting most of the time because for me for me it's, if I'm somewhere alone it's some like some piece of me is missing <laughs> but on the app uh, uber we are connected so if yeah. someone uh, order uh, uber then the other one know where she's going yeah. or something so, so just need, need to know everybody where she uh, when if she's going somewhere or I'm going somewhere if you know we are not together <laughs> But most of the time we are together, we do exactly the same things, going in exactly the same place. Just when sometimes when she's on date with some boy or me, we are separate. Yeah. <laughs> and we don't text each other. Yeah. <laughs> The atmosphere here is uh, amazing when you go inside in the church. Um, I cannot describe how I feel. Just um, it, when you go inside, it's just amazing with all candles, the things which are inside. So um, I love all the time we try to, if we have time, to come and uh, put some candles inside and just wish to be healthy and everything be okay. And, don't have injury and just to have a nice time. To going to church uh, when we are only me and she is uh, reminding us for our parents because we cannot spend time with them so much when we are traveling and uh, having tournaments. So it's uh, really relaxing and we are happy to do it when we have free time and we are really enjoying it. I'm totally like my dad. Everything, only the hair is from my mom. <laughs> she has like straight hair and our dad has curly hair. This is only the difference. The rest, I'm uh, like full my dad. And um, yeah, I'm thinking, especially now when I go to Plont, we're exactly the same. Just I miss the blue eyes. <laughs> That's it. Uh, everything is completely like her. The walking, the face. The people think uh, that she and our mom, they are like sisters, sisters twins, yeah. and I'm like not from the family <laughs> <laughs> because I'm with brown hair, not blonde. Yeah, I'm, um, yeah, I'm totally her copy, <laughs> just the blue eyes missing, and I'm very, I'm very angry to her that I don't get the blue eyes. <laughs> Thank you, Paris. We love you. Merci, Paris. Before we go, let's check out what your favourite players have been posting on social media. That's all the time we have today, but tune in next week as we find out how Japan's first Olympic badminton gold medalists, Misaki Matsutomo and Ayaka Takahashi, made the switch from singles to doubles.
っかけというか、まあ、やっぱり高校自分たちは高校生の時からこう組み始めてもともとお互いシングルスをやっていたんですけどやっぱりダブルスの面白さっていうのを知ったのはあの松友と組んでからなので私も、まあ、先輩と組んでいなければ今ダブルスは多分やっていなかったと思いますし。For all the latest stories and features on the HSBC BWF World Tour, remember you can log on to bwfbadminton.com. See you next week. Bye bye.